what is there are plenty of softwares available uh, both commercial as well as uh, uh, free and open but we will be concentrating on an uh, app called epicollect 5 uh, <coughs> a free software which is basically a, a web based tool to collect the customer's data uh, including location and media uh, on the web or in the uh, field using a mobile device what we can do with this epicollect 5 we can create a data form Uh, from the uh, web, and we can then open it in a tablet or smartphone by anyone. The form can also sh- can be shared uh, for data collection in the field, whether offline or online. One can also display the data in the collect uh, uh, file. So before uh, going for the collection, we need to uh, create or design a form uh, using the uh, particular website. Then And we can share it with others for collection. This, this form can be accessed by the Epic Collect 5 mobile app. So most of us, or most of you rather, uh, must have already been uh, downloaded and using it. Still, for the benefit of uh, others, I am just telling uh, uh, once again. What you have to do is uh, download the Epic Collect 5 mobile app uh, from Play Store or App Store. Just search for the Epic Collect 5, and then open the Epic Collect 5 on your device. You, I probably you need to have a Google account. To access or uh, to download and to use the epicolor file, uh, then the, the moment you open the epicolor file, it will ask for a, uh, a for a project. Because since you are opening in a mobile device, you you cannot <coughs> create an uh, a project in a um, uh, epicolor file app. You need to um, develop it in a uh, web page and then uh, access it in the mobile app. So what we do is we have already given you a GIS data, uh, GIS project scout um, uh, for data collection. Uh, for those of uh, you who have not uh, heard about it, uh, so this can be uh, added here. So you, you can click on the add project here, and then uh, you, the window opens here. You can type the name of the uh, project here that is GIS, and you just type type in there, and then you will get the Uh, project there you can see here the project is that is being displayed in your smartphone and then you select it and load it once you load it uh, you will get the, this window uh, because already people have entered the data there so this is the, uh, the scout table uh, which has been being uh, displayed now on your uh, screens and on the right side you, you, you can see this plus icon where you can add the uh, data uh, by pressing that uh, um, button there once you add the entry there you will get the form for uh, collecting the data but before this uh, you need to switch on your uh, you need to enable your uh, smartphone uh, location uh, for location uh, uh, display that means in, a, in, in other words a gps one uh, the most important here you should remember is unlike gps uh, uh, receivers here gps what we are doing, the gps we are going to get is in particular hybrid gps it is called assisted gps even in indoors also you can collect the data not like uh, gps uh, um, uh, receivers so that is the advantage of the smartphone and uh, uh, the moment uh, you to open this form the scout form the first field is the location so it will ask you uh, it will be uh, the moment you, uh, you switch it on uh, this uh, field you will see the uh, lat lag values with some accuracy here the important thing one should keep in mind is you should wait for certain some time a few seconds a few minutes to improve your accuracy you can see here the gps accuracy you can see here 7 so wait at least if you need to have a, a 10 meters uh, um, um, uh, accuracy so that will be good enough you can, you can uh, get it will go up to 4 meters uh, also so you wait for a certain time and then we uh, then update the location you keep on updating the location it will improve the accuracy depending on the your signal strength okay and then go to the next field wherein uh, we have the Um, uh, field called photo location. What you can do is either uh, you can click the uh, cam- uh, camera there, take a shot, shot, or what you can do is if you have already taken the photograph, you can collect it from the gallery. Okay. And then go to the next field, uh, wherein you can enter your name uh, and the other details. Uh, if you want, you can view there. That means particularly the location, uh, description, etc. And then save it. So this is important. The moment you added the data, you need to save it. And then once you save it, you will go back to the again the first screen, uh, wherein you have the 
uh, uh, data entry is there, you keep on adding your data. And then you, you keep saving it. One thing you must remember here is the, the saving your data here is in the local or even smartphone only. It's not uh, available in the web server because it is with you only. So uh, for to do that one, on the right side menu uh, bar, uh, you click that button there, you will get a, 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 a menu with a list of items. You can see on the top uh, upload entries. So you need to select this one to upload the entries. And then it will uh, it will be you will get the uh, next window where it is asking you to upload the data. Uh, you, uh, you will get a, a, a four tabs there: upload the data, upload the photos, audio files, uh, and uh, video files, etc. So whatever the data you have collected, you need to upload it by go and pressing the uh, uh, rest of the buttons. Once your upload is over, your project is complete. Okay. So this is the uh, in in nutshell, I guess. Uh, Show you once you, you complete the data. So, how can you access your data or how can you download it with the data? So, to download the data, you need to go to the Epicolor 5 website that is called 5.epicolor.net uh, with the Google ID. Most important is Google ID is a must to access the Epicolor file. Once you um, open this web page, uh, if this is your project, uh, uh, <clears throat> or somebody else's project, no, no problem, as I said, it is a public project which when we created it, we made it public. So what you can do is uh, the way you have done it in the, your uh, app, here also you need to search your project. Type it here, um, there, by going this window here, the, the project window, you can, you can just press the button here and you will get the window there where you have to enter the, uh, your project name here. You can see here, I have entered the GeoHS code here. Uh, the moment I enter it, I, I, the, this will be displayed on your, uh, uh, your uh, on the screen in the mobile. You just uh, uh, click on the view. Uh, once you, you can see already till this morning, uh, I think around more than 65 entries were there. Uh, this is, I think, uh, a, a bit uh, old one. But you have a lot of plenty of entries there. So you just uh, uh, view the data there. Once you click the view the data, you will get this screen where your table will be displayed. So the table which has been uh, uh, uploaded by various uh, uh, persons through, from different parts of the country. You can see the table here, uh, how many entries were there. Uh, you can see there. Uh, here the, you can display it either uh, by uh, data collection that is uh, um, uh, later, uh, latest ones to the earlier ones or you can display it by the alphabetic ladder either uh, ascending or descending order. And you can see here. So what is it you are seeing here? You can view the if the photograph is there, you can view it, and then you can see the title of the uh, row there, and then when it was created, uh, etc. That you can be there. Okay, the moment you want, you click it on the one of the uh, uh, row there, you will see the, the details of the that particular row. So what is the light lamps and what is the photo location, and you can see the, the, their name also, who is the person collected the data. That's how you can view the data here. Okay, once you, you are satisfied with your data, uh, your thing, all your entries are okay. Uh, um, what you can do is you can go for the um, viewing the, your data in a map. You just click there. Uh, you, you go to the, that menu there. You can see here the different uh, uh, menu items: download, title, uh, the table, map, etc. You just click on the map. You have different uh, map views there. You can just see your data, how your data has been being displayed in the map there. So depending on the, the, the different locations, because here the locations are concentrated in the particular regions. So you are seeing a cluster of points in four clusters or five clusters, depending on the um, data entry there. You have you have different views there. You can see the terrain, you can see the uh, cartographic view, or you can see the open shift map, etc. If you are interested, you can just enlarge it and you can see there uh, the data, how it looks. And then the important part is how you can go you are going to the uh, in, uh, get the data to a system. So here uh, the option is you can see here the download option. Okay, the download option you can see here, uh, and you just uh, click the button to download. Uh, the moment you download the um, uh, you click the download button, you will see that the next window wherein you know you have the uh, download data formats. There are two formats available there. 
is that the csp and the json file one is the uh, java based file the other one is the comma separate value it is simple text file you can see here whether what data you want to download it whether you want to data entire table or you want it to download the only for the last one week or last few days so you will give the money click it you will get the uh, sub menu there so depending on your uh, uh, choice you can click that one and then start uh, clicking the uh, button here download the button here the moment you click that one the file will be um, uh, the project uh, name file that is jhd scout and uh, zip because you are going to get a compressed csv file in a zip format you can see here uh, that's how you can see the uh, zip window that uh, in the file manager you can see the how the file has been uh, <coughs> downloaded so but now here the problem for you is uh, for uh, many of you who don't have the uh, what <coughs> mobile compression software uh, how you uh, how to go about it our purpose is to not only to view the data we can uh, <coughs> um, enable the data to be uh, viewed in the different apps like osm and uh, uh, mapillary desktop uh, um, software will definitely will enable us to do these things but in how you are going to do about in a mobile one for that for us there are two alternatives available to uh, websites are there uh, one is called my data uh, uh, cloud converter or you can you can use the gps visualizer here my data my data converter is only it will take only the uncompressed for csv file it will not take the zip file so again you need to have the uh, <coughs> uh, compressed um, so um, app here to uncompress the file so instead what we are uh, suggesting is we, we can go we are directly go to the website called gps visualizer where it can accept csv file or it can accept any, any text file or it can accept a compressed file also okay we go there to gps visualizer uh, uh so that is uh, uh, <coughs> website gpsjazer.com and then you can see this window here where you will get the uh, this one in on your uh, phone itself you, you, can, you, the, you just slide down you will see the various formats you can accept it so our purpose is to download the file in a gpx format or you can download in a kml format also or there is google uh, uh, earth file also but our um, uh, requirement is in the uh, <coughs> Uh, gpx file so what we do use we'll just uh, select the gpx file for the format and go to the next window you can see here uh, you have you have got this window here where you can you can give more than one file also as input file and you can you can select the format whether you want to uh, get the uh, plain uh, uh, text format or uh, kml format so uh, i have taken the gpx file gpx format and then i, I have to give the my it will ask you to uh, choose the file here i have chosen the file uh, that is our compressed file directly here you can see here after this um, once i press the convert button here i will see this uh, next window wherein it is already converted and it has given me output in a, in this window also i can simply cut and paste uh, copy this uh, text here and paste in any notepad uh, or any, any express uh, file and rename it as a gpx file or else what i can do is i can directly uh, download it download it the gpx file here okay the moment i download gpx file the system will ask me here uh, uh, you see you can, this is the file which has downloaded it here okay and then you can see here it's open because if your if your system is already having some applications which can open your gpx file you can use that uh, open button here itself uh, the moment you uh, just uh, go uh, click here it will be downloaded to your system and it is being displayed here after downloading only you can see click here open the moment i click open here uh, i got this window wherein they is asking me the options there were several options are there by default it is uh, um, showing me that uh, os map or we have other applications also other edit editing softwares and other mapping softwares uh, we can choose it here directly because it can say here depending on your requirement whether you want to open always with this uh, os manually or only once for this time being you can choose that one and click there once i click there once i click there it's open now it is directly open in the os map uh, you can see the number of uh, uh, web points which have been downloaded here you can see the uh, uh, that's the symbol etc you can see here so that's how we can get the data uh, from 
I pick up five uh, to OS man uh, through CSU file that is come uh, comma separate value file to the GPX file in the OS man. Okay, that's all for the day, friends. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I am Ramakrishna, former director, GSI, Geology Survey of India. Uh, now, today's program, I think we have uh, three technologies. One is uh, EpiCollect, uh, and uh, second is OSMAND, third is Mapillary. Basically, all the applications, all the applications are mobile apps, and uh, all the applications are meant for uh, collecting the data. And EpiCollect is particularly for point data, where you can have <clears throat> option of uh, giving an attribute and whereas uh, mapillary and OSM and you can create a tracks etc and uh, briefly now I will explain about uh, the features available in OSM and OSM and is open street map Android application initially it is an Android application only but it is now available both on uh, uh, Android phones and uh, iOS uh, <coughs> also yeah now we'll see the first uh, the basic functions of OSMAND. OSMAND is uh, basically it's uh, uh, for uh, uh, mapping and uh, the navigation, both the purposes. And it's uh, open source software. You can download it from uh, Google Play Store and uh, App Store also. This is the starting interface. And first, we'll try to understand the interface. And after that, what are the options available in this? And uh, those things we'll see. This is the opening uh, screen of your uh, mobile app OSMAND. So first, uh, let us understand the features available on the screen. These, these two things are the zoom in and zoom out. and uh, uh, the, the, this is uh, the your present location. It takes you to the, your present location. And uh, here, uh, th this is the direction for uh, your navigation. If you want to go to some place and uh, like what you see in Google Maps, uh, the, this is for navigation purpose. So you can give the starting location and uh, destination location. It will guide with the uh, voice guidance. And whereas uh, this is uh, so many other uh, menu options are there, I'll show one by one. And on the top left, uh, you have uh, uh, search option. Uh, another thing is this is a configure map option. And this is a, your north. Now, uh, coming to, we'll, we'll search, uh, we'll uh, try to understand each and everyone, everything. Yeah, these are the options uh, uh, for the configuration your profile. Uh, the dashboard of uh, second is map makers map makers is uh, like uh, suppose if you want to uh, create a point uh, like what you create in epic collect you can create a point uh, with waypoints uh, similar to waypoints and here it is my places you can uh, store your my uh, your place of interest and this is for search and this is uh, directions uh, directions is for navigations so first, uh, most important thing is uh, two things. One is the configuration of map, and there is the configuration of the screen. Configuration is map is what are the things to be there, what are the maps to be there in your uh, OSM and so that, that, that's the overlay map or base map, or underlying map. Those things are uh, defined in the configuration maps. And whereas the download maps, uh, so the beauty of the OSM and is uh, unlike Google maps, Google maps has to be online. So if you don't have internet connection, you cannot navigate, you cannot view the things. But uh, the facility given in the voice command is you can download the maps of your uh, area of interest. Like suppose somebody is in uh, Ladakh, so they can uh, download the map and that, that will be residing your, uh, your uh, instrument. So you can navigate and you can map the things. And uh, so that you can do is uh, with the download the maps option. So now two important things. The other things I think uh, you can prove or will interact uh, during the training part. But uh, I'll show the important things. Uh, uh, that is a configuration map, download maps, and configuration of the screen.
so this is a configuration of your map on the map what are the things to be uh, seen like uh, suppose if you want to now dr surendranath has created a csv file and convert into the gpx file suppose you want to see those gpx file in os man that you can do it by enabling the gpx files okay and now th that is i have downloaded it I, uh, he has mailed me and i have downloaded it and downloaded and that is my in, uh, uh, system or mobile now i'll add that with the add more option add more option you can search now it's a scout Scout is my GPX file name. I'll search it. This is the one. And all 39, 39 points data collected by you uh, from different parts of the country. Th that data is now in OSMAND. 39 points. Well, let, let us see first one. First one is uh, from Uttarakhand. Yeah, it's a it's a distance is automatically measured from my uh, present location. I am staying in Hyderabad. There's a, a place called Upal. From this place, uh, the point. Uh, data collected at Uttarakhand, in Uttarakhand, it's about 406, uh, put, uh, 1406 kilometers. So you, you can view the XY coordinates of that particular location and uh, the photograph taken uh, not in, uh, see the, the, the drawback or the limitation of this uh, software is you cannot have all the attributes collected uh, there in Epicollect here. So only the point location and uh, Incidentally, he has collected Mr. Nishant uh, KK. So he has collected uh, data from Mapillary also. So Mapillary can be integrated in this. Uh, so th in this case, Mapillary image is uh, tagged to this particular location. So similarly, you can uh, view all the data. Yeah, this, this is the location. Similarly, you can uh, see uh, different parts of the country. The star in the red circle are the uh, point of, uh, data points uh, collected by you using EpiCollect. So EpiCollect data, uh, which is converted to GPX, can also be integrated and viewed in OSMAND. That is one part. Second thing is, you uh, have the map source. Map source options are the offline vector maps. Offline vector maps, it's already preloaded in my system. So those things can be, uh, I'm, at present, I'm using that. But instead of that, uh, OSM and online tiles are Microsoft Earth. Like uh, if I uh, select Microsoft Earth, uh, so what will be the, so this is the Microsoft Earth image. So you can change uh, the back, the base map. And uh, so next is uh, the overlay map. Next is, uh, see, one is the base map. Second is the overlay map and another thing is the underlying map. So one sits over the base map, another sits under the uh, base map. So you can have the option of having a overlay map or underlying map. And the procedure is same. You just uh, uh, get into that and uh, select uh, whichever map uh, you, you want, whether it's a My Microsoft Earth or Google Earth, the option is not here. But Bing Maps, you can have. Open Street Maps, uh, you can have. Suppose the underlying maps. So this is the overlay map. So the overlay map I'm seeing, it is a OSM and tiles. The base map is now, the base map is uh, Microsoft Earth and OSM uh, and uh, online tiles uh, uh, is uh, my 
overlay map. Now I can increase the transparency, decrease the transparency. OK. So this facility is also there. And the, this is a use of having overlay maps. Similarly, you can try for the underlay maps also. OK, then map source, map source I already told. And the mapillary also, you can integrate with this. This is the mapillary, integration of the mapillary. OK, so the, these are some of the important things of uh, uh, your uh, configuring the map. Then we'll see download maps. See, download maps, uh, th this is the greatest facility for uh, people like uh, geologists or uh, who are, are interested in uh, data collection. They will be depending on the topo sheets, uh, topo sheets and compass and all those things. Uh, so instead, uh, they can download uh, the area of interest. Suppose uh, I want to download uh, uh, so map of Telangana. That, that is in uh, Asia, India, and uh, or maybe some Assam. So two things are standard map, road map, road only maps are freely available. Other things uh, you have to pay some nominal cost for around 300 rupees per maybe per annum. So around 300 rupees per annum or uh, month wise also or quarterly wise also. There are different uh, slab separates so you can pay and you can download the data. But it's worth paying uh, that paltry uh, <coughs> sum for them. So the, this is a very important feature. So once uh, the downloaded uh, map is with you in your uh, mobile, then you need not uh, have uh, internet connectivity. So without uh, offline also, you can map, you can view the things. OK, next uh, feature is uh, download. I think download I have shown you. Then the configuring screen. So on the screen, there are so several features, but what you want to see the, those features on your screen. That is important to see. Now map, I have activated Mapillary, but I am not seeing the Mapillary on my screen. So for that, uh, what you need to do is you have to configure your screen, like uh, Mapillary. Mapillary, I made it active in uh, my configure map, but uh, it is not to be seen on the screen, but you have to make it on mapillary. Suppose you are uh, traveling, uh, so your speed limit and speed altitude, you want to uh, show on the your uh, screen, GPS information, how many satellites are, what is the strength of the your uh, GPS, those things, uh, and the GPX logging also. So GPX logging is uh, like it's a uh, tracking, uh, regarding a track using OS command. So you can, um, I'll, I'll show that, OK? So the current time and date, those things can also be displayed uh, on uh, your screen. Now, prior to that, uh, these, these features are not available. Mapillary was not available. That altitude was not, uh, not available. And uh, this is the strength of the your satellites, the number of satellites available for your GPS. And this is the track. Suppose mapillary, so if you want to see the mapillary, it, uh, it, it activates uh, the mapillary app. I think that will be dealt in detail by Mr. Nageshwaran later. And uh, this is a very important for us. Uh, this is a track. So you can uh, start new segment. And start moving by row, by vehicle, or by walk, or by 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 skill. It uh, at regular intervals. It defined regular intervals. Defined regular intervals. It will uh, uh, record uh, the x y coordinates of that particular and make a track of it. And what else? Uh, map makers. Uh, map makers is basically map makers is basically for uh, uh, point data. It's uh, something like a uh, waypoint creation. Suppose I, I want to have, uh, I know some coordinates, but uh, I want to make, 
So plot it on the map. So you can enter your coordinates here, this, some 17, 52, 78, 25. Suppose these are the coordinates given to me of, of a particular location, which I want to see on the your uh, OSM and uh, <coughs> map. Then say, OK. So that will be added to the point. OK. So these are the, some of the features uh, available. And uh, one more thing is, uh, which is uh, generally useful to most of us is uh, uh, the distance. Configure screen. So you can have the distance tool also. Current time and compass coordinate widgets. So there is another beautiful application. This is a radius ruler. Radius ruler, what it does it from your present location. Say at the regular, in, uh, it's a sort of a buffering. It's about a one kilometer radius. What are the features available? Two kilometers radius. What is it? It depends on the your zoom zoom level. That I'll show you. Okay. Now see from my location, from my location, one kilometer, two kilometer. Now one kilometer is when I am zooming out. Then uh, the uh, uh, the radius of the circle it increases two kilometers now so two kilometers uh, four kilometers six kilometers nine kilometers etc etc so this is another important application which may be useful for uh, some of you people suppose uh, there is a geoheritage site and you want to see the distance uh, from ne nearby uh, a town or nearby uh, uh, city those things can be uh, it, it, it will be useful for certain uh, uh, that those purposes. Too. And uh, one more thing is this a direction. Direction is for the navigation purpose. OK. So this is my position. And after that, I am uh, just uh, probably most of you are uh, uh, familiar with the Golconda Fort in Hyderabad, stationed at Hyderabad. Searching a Golconda Fort. Yeah, Golconda Fort. This will be uh, really useful for most of our ge ge geology communities because we want to see the terrain and profile, if you want to draw the profile, etc. So the, this is very, very important for uh, it's taking time to get it. So what it does, it uh, from, from, from distance and uh, to distance, it creates a profile. Yeah. Now you see the lower left, lower, uh, this, this part is the profile. The solid uh, field one is a blue is is uh, uh, is uh, altitude profile, whereas uh, that is a slope percentage profile. Now, so I want to see the total distance is 18.2 kilometers, and the travel time is approximate. Uh, uh, travel time is mentioned is 16 minutes, but it's not possible uh, in Hyderabad. Yeah. So other analysis of the total uh, traverse, uh, it, it displaces where is the uh, altitude is more, or uh, your slope percentage more, or slope percentage less, etc. So these things will probe later, and you can also probe on your own. And during the exercises also, we'll probe uh, these things. Sir. So and uh, and what else? Uh, you can measure the distances. D 
distance tool uh, where is the distance tool is there uh, so you can uh, measure the distance using a uh, yeah measure the distance so the this is also one utility tool where uh, you can uh, see from here from uh, this is my location my house and uh, this is one point i am adding a point and uh, maybe the nearest uh, road connection or nearest chaurasta uh, square so distance is appro approximately 542 meters so this type of uh, utility is also available in us mand so thank you very much and uh, sorry for some interruptions uh, in the beginning and if anything is there uh, as uh, uh, mr ravi kumar told uh, so you can interact with us our phone numbers will be shared with you thank you very much uh, trainees, uh, uh, particularly and GPS visualizer, I will uh, just speak uh, on that. So we have just one uh, Once you download the data to a system in a compressed format, uh, that CSV file, we, we were earlier uh, given you to download uh, using the MyG Data Cloud. Here the issue is uh, by my Data Geo Cloud, it cannot accept the compressed form. So you need to uncompress it. So that is the reason why we are, we are suggesting you to go for the um, GPS visualizer. This is another uh, site wherein <coughs> uh, this is uh, equally user friendly uh, where you can uh, um, convert a downloaded file from the epithelial file, the compressed format, uh, you, know, you can convert it into GPS. But here the advantage is you need not convert uh, or you need not uncompress the uh, epithelial file uh, downloaded file. You can directly uh, convert into JPEG here. It, it is also um, a, a free uh, so, uh, software. So uh, you, um, users are all uh, welcome to use this one. And there, there is no binding on any, anything else here. So, but the moment you open this one, you will see this window. Maybe you have a different view on the mobile. You can directly open the mobile itself. You, you just click here. Convert to GPX. Okay, I think this you are seeing here. Convert to GPX here. And you will get this window here. So, wherein you need to give your input file. So, here three options are available for us. Either you can simply convert your uh, um, file into a plain text file, or you can convert into a GPX file, or the Google Earth KML file, so that you can view this data in a Google Earth. So, what we do here is we will just uh, directly go for the uh, using our file here okay i just show you here just click it here this is another uh, application uh, uh, website to convert our uh, epithelial file uh, data into a um, uh, gpx file so that we can use it in voice command the advantage with this is it can take as a csv file or it can take the compressed csv file also so the, uh, we can either export it as GPX file or we can export it as a Google at uh, KML file. Here we will export it as a uh, GPX file uh, using our uh, uh, compressed file from the uh, <coughs> Epical at 5. So this is a file which I have downloaded. Uh, I just use this file itself. Now it is, we can see here that file is loaded there. I simply go for the convert. Now I can see here the file has been converted as GPX file and is given as a uh, this file as uh, today's date followed by the data.gpx. The text also being displayed here. This GPX file is a simple XML file. What we can do is we can simply copy this uh, and paste it in the notepad and uh, rename it as GPX and we can use it in the uh, OS command or uh, Google, Google map or you can use it even in uh, any desktop uh, um, 
GA software also. So this is how we can use the GBS visualizer. Thank you. Thank you, Sandhanath. Good morning. I am Nageshwaran. I will be talking about uh, the mapillary. The last two lectures were on Epicollect and uh, OSMAN. They are also uh, data collection apps and mapillary also is a data collection app. Mapillary is a very simple uh, uh, application. It is a street level imagery capture platform. What I mean by imagery is a photograph. Just capturing photographs at the ground level and uploading it to the servers. It is, a, it is just a crowdsourcing uh, app. Throughout the world, people are using this uh, mapillary app to upload their data from their surrounding areas. It has got tools to enable everyone to collect, share and use these street level maps, images, not maps, images. It, this uh, mapillary claims that it has got uh, over a billion images from all over the world and it has become so important now that Facebook has recently acquired this mapillary. Of course I think it's going to be free only. Now. You people have already, I think you, some of you have already used uh, mapillary installed and uh, they have collected some data also. But for the sake of uh, all of us, I will once again uh, show you how to install and use mapillary. You can become an expert in mapillary in a few minutes. It doesn't take much uh, complication like uh, Epicollect or voice amount. They are much more complicated uh, softwares. I'll just show you. I'll show you the actual uh, installation on the play store go to mapillary click install it's a 26 MB uh, software it will install in no time it takes only hardly a few seconds to uh, download and install so once we install I will open it and uh, give the necessary permissions. And then you have to log in. If you are new to this, you have to sign up. And if you have already uh, got an account, you just sign in. I have an account, so I will sign in. Email. I'll sign in. So once you enter that uh, mapillary, this is the first uh, uh, screen you are uh, you you come to see that. 
and uh, it's a very simple uh, interface there is at the bottom there is this explore and there's this dollar sign that is a marketplace then capture upload and profile and when you enter into this uh, mapillary you are shown the location where you are the center of the place, that uh, blue dot is where you are currently located so it uh, it takes the location from the uh, um, um, uh, phone locations and it points to that location and uh, at the top uh, you got uh, this menu i'll come to that one by one now let us explore and uh, zoom down you are seeing this uh, green lines once you zoom down you will be getting dots so this is the data mapillary has got from crowdsourcing see it has got tremendous data from all over the world so billion they say billion images see. so one by clicking this uh, i am coming to the location i am in salem tamil nadu now what this mapillary uh, software is used for is collection of imagery the photographs of a point or along a line which is called a track that is if you walk across a place along a road or along a footpath and you, if you uh, capture the images it will be sequential images will be captured and uploaded to the mapillary server now i will go to that capture button here and we'll start capturing this is the screen i am uh, getting actually it is uh, mapillary takes uh, captures uh, imagery in the form of uh, in, in landscape mode so you have to hold the camera like this the horizontal way and there are some lines you see the lines horizontal lines using the they are the guides actually you can keep the mobile in a horizontal way we using this guide lines okay then start capturing the images there are two ways of capturing the images one is the distance based and the another is time based distance based means at every some particular uh, uh, distance it will start taking one photograph so normally we keep uh, 5 meter uh, distance as the uh, for uh, clicking the distance based and some certain times we may have to use the uh, time based uh, uh, mode also so here and there is another mode auto or manual in automatic mode once you start uh, this red uh, button it will start it will keep on uh, clicking at every 5 minute 5 meter interval if you are walking or if you are driving or if you are riding a motorbike it will start clicking at every 5 minutes uh, 5 meter interval it will start clicking that is automatic mode and there is one manual mode just by clicking this sliding here you get this m that is manual mode where you have to click by this you have to click manually whenever wherever you want whichever point you of interest you have you have to click manually 
this may be required at certain times where where you are moving very fast and you are uh, uh, your photograph is not of a satisfactory quality it is blurred so you you will stop for a moment and then click it so this is how this manual uh, is used so mostly we will be using this auto thing and uh, there is another button this fan fold here this is by clicking this you will be taken to the location current location it will be showing the map where you are located so do, just to check where you are you will be you may be clicking this once in a while so come back and then another another button is there here this is suppose you your uh, one track is over and you want to uh, take another track you have to click this the track will end and the next track will start that is the uh, next sequence will start and uh, this one this uh, up arrow is the position this is the, the which way you are moving you have to take uh, that uh, normally you are going forward so always select this uh, this direction and click done so now it is showing the status also it was showing the gps my gps uh, the signal was uh, very good and it is showing the battery power and the temperature at my place and the storage uh, empty storage space which i have it is showing here and who is the collector it is also showing the name now once you start clicking it will be showing the number of photographs see now i am i have selected that uh, distance based at the where we will select the distance based i will tell you this uh, cog wheel is there just click the setting here you go to capture here there is uh, distance based capture it is given as 5 meter here that is the uh, default you can select it you can select uh, a zero for zero doesn't mean anything 3 meter 5 meter 10 meters and 20 meters maximum of 20 meters because mapillary needs a uh, overlapping images it creates a immersive experience when you uh, watch the uh, sequence you will you will see uh, it is like a 3d it is like a, just like a more video you will see uh, as though you are moving along the track so for that uh, effect it needs a uh, overlap between uh, one frame to the next frame so that's why the maximum distance is given as 20 meter and uh, this is a distance based uh, capture and you can change it to uh, time threshold also which we are not doing now we will be only using the distance based capture and there are other options which you can explore at your own pace there are several uh, all self explanatory and much, nothing much is required to be explained uh, in this uh, thing i'll go to i'll go to the camera here also all the options are uh, given my internet got disconnected my broadband so i am on uh, i hope you are receiving me can the whatsapp group can tell me it's visible now your screen is visible okay okay i'll carry on with that now hello yeah these are some of the other uh, uh, options in the camera which you can uh, see the, all the explanations are given so 
nothing much is required here then the capture thing we have already seen so what we do is we go along a route where the our uh, place of interest is situated what we hello go ahead sir this is coming go ahead okay thank you Uh, yeah once again so we have collected the uh, imagery is in one track and next what you have to do is you go to So when there is GPS accuracy is low, it will not capture because the photographs have to have a geo tagging. Without that, mapillary is nothing. It cannot accept the, your photographs without a proper uh, geo locations. So now the GPS is good. It's coming. Let me try whether it is clicking. yeah so now once you are satisfied that you have uh, you have covered the track uh, you go to upload there is upload button is there it automatically goes to the upload once you have collected now i have collected only one image there is only one image and uh, suppose if you have collected 100 images it will be shown here it will be shown here these 100 images will be sequentially shown here you can uh, edit them you can uh, delete them each if you are not satisfied with one particular image you can delete it and uh, you can then if you are satisfied with that you can go for this upload uh, button now it is asking whether once it is uploaded our the uh, image in your phone will be deleted so by default it is it will be doing the uploading only under wifi and you can override that now it is uploading in progress so once we upload it the mapillary takes some time to show it in the map maybe a day so after a day or so your map your uh, data you what you have collected will be shown in the uh, mapillary map now what i have done i have collected last week i have collected some uh, track uh, which uh, which is here so once you click that that screen will be split into uh, to two parts the top portion will be the uh, photographs which was collected by me and the bottom will be the map or the track which along which the photographs were taken now you can play this this is just like a, a street map of uh, google you click this uh, arrow it will be moving this i was walking and uh, taking the photograph so it they are not very stable and uh, individual frames you can move or you can play like a video by this play button and at the same time you see that bottom the screen that your uh, pointer is moving along the track i will zoom it
Sí. And another thing you can you can uh, edit the speed of this uh, play you can by this uh, rabbit uh, this if it is towards rabbit it is faster so i making it faster so to get this uh, immersive effect that's why the overlap is required so this is a 5 meter interval uh, photographs are taken around 180 photographs for about uh, 500 600 meters distance so this is available after a day or so after you are after we upload you will get it now certain points you have to keep in mind while capturing once again These are the five thumb rules. Uh, the first rule is when capturing, you keep moving, holding the camera, pointing in one direction. Don't point here and there so that uh, your, uh, your sequence will be jumpy. And uh, so you have to hold the camera in a horizontal position with the help of these guidelines which come in the screen. And the camera should be always towards the direction of movement. And uh, the condition should be, the sun should be behind you so that uh, that uh, the portion which you are going to uh, cover is well lit and uh, with minimum of uh, traffic and uh, less number of people. So that uh, your, uh, your objective of collecting the uh, photograph of the area is uh, successful and uh, take as many images as possible in one sequence because you are not going to do it again and again this if you keep these five rules you will you will be ending up with very good uh, 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 photographs and another, some of the things you have to keep uh, in, in the mind is uh, you should have enough storage if and if your phone uh, supports micro sd card you should have it and uh, charge, of course, I need not tell about it because at the crucial juncture, you will be short of power and it will be going off. So, you should always have adequate uh, power, with the, preferably with a power bank. And uh, this is how the camera is, they suggest it, camera is held on, the, on your uh, chest. You, you just have a pouch and hang it or tape it to your chest so that it doesn't move here and there and it is pointing towards uh, the direction of your movement and also it is not uh, jumping and uh, this is a mount while you are uh, driving and if you are going by a bike you can have a very sturdy mount And of course, this is a normal uh, mode of uh, capture by holding hand. Or you can have a selfie stick also. That is a much more uh, comfortable and a very uh, good uh, um, mode of uh, capture. This. So these are some of the points which you have to keep in mind while uh, capturing. And. Uh, there is nothing much uh, to say more uh, that's all if you have any doubts you can just uh, call me on this uh, whatsapp thank you very much hello uh, yes, i'm sir. back yeah no. i'm back uh, i'm going to do my presentation now after this many presentations by very experienced 
presenters. Now uh, I'm going to show you just I would call it a sum up. So you are able to see my presentation? Yeah. Yeah, good. So the sum up is it is in the Pan India webinar training that you are there and what are you searching for we are here searching for geo heritage we are all united to bring the geo heritage map on the anvil of tourism but i am showing a particularly important photograph from gujarat dinosaur park so imagine that you have got some dinosaur nesting sites how will you do now with the technology that you have learned let's see what we do we will transfer the location into this what is this software it is right in your smartphone i would like to remind you the power of the smartphone in your vanity bags or in your pockets or in your backpacks think of the level of information technology that is available to you in a smartphone which is almost available everywhere so you bring in the data from the geo heritage site into your smartphone which is collected by epi collect 5 and you people many of you i think i counted more than 40 have already collected data on epi collect 5 and uploaded it you can see the inset it's a small map right from the northernmost part ladakh Leh, I hope that some of you up there in Ladakh are listening to me now. And down to Kanyakumari and in the east, Aham, Assam to Gujarat, Vadodara. The rest of the country would like to know it as Baroda. Yes, they are all there. So we bring our epicolect into OSM and, and then our mapillary is already there. The very purpose of introducing you to OSM and is to integrate both your tracks of mapillary and your points of epicollect, which are very important, onto one software. A software that can show you where you are. Remember the power you have in your smartphones. As a geologist, when I started my career back in the early 70s, <laughs> I hardly dreamt that I will be addressing a seminar with the highest technology. I am thankful to God for that. Now, all this done and all the presentations done from very, very illustrated colleagues of mine after this we take a five minute break because you people can have tea and maybe chat among yourselves on your whatsapp and all and then come with questions that will make us trainers scratch our head and try to answer you so after this Pan India webinar training, the presentations part is over. I declare a five minute break and Nageshwaran will play the most soulful music you heard in the morning. So see you all after five minutes, after five minutes. Bye bye. Yeah. Uh, we are back and uh, hope 
you had a nice tea. Now, the actual discussion starts. Uh, let's see what we can discuss. To start keeping, yeah, to make the ball rolling, I will keep the neck, I will make the ball rolling. I hope I am audible. Yesterday morning I was not quite audible. Today I understand my system is better. So I will think of a scenario as a geologist and uh, pose it to you to start the discussion. Think of data collection on Epicollect. Think of mapillary on uh, data collection in the actual full day. For example, uh, I'm there with Epicollect in a COVID-19 situation. So, how can I collect the data? This is the first question. Nagesh, uh, you may keep your mic off, camera off. So, in a COVID situation, in a COVID situation, you might be wondering, we don't encourage you to go into the crowd violating the lockdown. Now, what about it? Then what can we do? We do have photographs. We do have photographs we have collected. In my three and a half decades of service, I have got hundreds of photos. It is a different matter that I know that I have photos, but I am unable to locate them. My friend Farooq and the friend Amarish will watch for it. And we have to go on searching for it. But nevertheless, we will succeed in finding some photos. I think that Dr. Sudhavad Dadi will agree on it. Then when you have a photo and you roughly know where from you have collected, you have reason to believe you can do some simulated AP collect data. Today, our trainer, Surendranath, Dr. Surendranath, has actually told you how to simulate it. So you take a photograph on your smartphone of the photograph. If it is already there on your smartphone, take it. And uh, taking a photograph of an existing photograph, I think there are some thumb rolls, as Nageshwaran has put it. I would like to have them transferred on a map. I mean the track. Hey, Paruki sir is online, sir. Paruki sir is online. Good enough. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, I can hear you, sir. Uh, Go ahead. To transfer it on a map, how do I do? Very good question. Please go off the line now. Very good question. Uh, we will field that question. It's a very nice question. I would like people to use their WhatsApp number given for such questions. And uh, you will be thrilled that with some five, six seconds delay, you will come live on the YouTube. So I was exactly explaining that, Dr. Farooq. Dr. Farooq is from Katak and he has got a wealth of photographs. And uh, I would request uh, Dr. Surendranath to come by and uh, show that part of his presentation in which he has actually simulated it. Now over to Surendranath.
Meanwhile, I can show show my presentation also. I just Yeah, here I think um, I was trying to. Uh, I was trying here how to view the data in Epic Collect Five, uh, uh, both as a ta table form as well as a uh, uh, in the map form. Here you can see that's the uh, option for us, sir. Either you can download the data or you can view it in a map also. Here itself we can view the data in the map. Just to have the preview thing. So well, this is how we can have the, the various views. Uh, we can see our data here, uh, which has been collected by various users, whether in a satellite uh, uh, background or in a terrain background uh, or in simple uh, cartography background, or we can see as a what we call open street map background. This is how we can view the data here. And then, if you have privileges and all, you can modify the data here also. If there is any mistakes and all, you can edit the data here. You can see this. Uh, you can see here uh, because as a general uh, user of the form, you don't have the um, um, permissions to edit the data here. You cannot do anything except collection part. You can simply collect the data and upload it. But whereas the creator of the project or the person who is authorized, uh, he can be given permission. If the permissions are there, he can have the option here. He can delete the row itself if there is a mistake. Or what he can do is he can edit the a data here by you will have the pen icon here by pressing that icon uh, i can modify the data here either lat long values or uh, we see suppose if i am already having the uh, photograph of geo here geo here is site uh, in the morning itself i have done one exercise you can see the uh, those who are having the um, uh, um, uh, we access to view the geo uh, uh, scout data and the topmost row is the tirumala that is natural art that is uh, uh, that was the uh, photograph which I was uploaded in the morning. What I did is I uploaded in the morning uh, directly from the data collection window and uh, uh, from the project window I modified the lat lang values. You can see that uh, top uh, topmost show there, which is, which is having the Chila or uh, uh, <clears throat> Natural Art Geo Heritage Park Tirumala. So that's how we can modify the data in case you uh, need to edit the data because. During this COVID-95, we are unable to go out and collect the data. So in case we have some good photographs of particular to the uh, location, uh, we can get the lat lang values of those sites. Uh, and then we can modify the data suitably in this provided you are having the this thing, um, uh, authority to edit or uh, delete it. The other uh, further thing in the question was how to view the data in a map. So here what we are doing is uh, this is the uh, this is the data um, uh, which was collected in the um, uh, GS, um, uh, it is Scout project by epic 5 here. So there is provision for us to view the data or what we can do is we can download the data here. We are downloading the data as CSV file or JSN file. CSV file will do good for us. Once you have CSV file, any JS based software, it can be open, sir. Let's say, um, for example, like QGS, it, we can directly open CSV file. Uh, and it will be uh, shown in a uh, background map. And if you don't have it, what we can do is we can convert this uh, um, CSV file, compress CSV file into a um, what we call JPEG file um, uh, through this uh, either through the GPS visualizer or through the uh, through the five G data uh, uh, dot cloud uh, server. And then 
once you get the here the beautiful thing with this uh, gps visualizer is you can collect the data in gps form or you can get in a or you call a, a, a google a kml file so if you, if you have desktop um, um, you can open that kml file in the google map itself so you can use your data in a google map background also even if you don't have gis software if you um, export the data in kml file here uh, i will show you uh, directly how we can do that uh, in the i will show you that one sir how i can directly do in the gps uh, uh, this thing you can see here sir the options for us we having uh, plenty of options here in the gps visualizer window so what we can do is we can uh, get the gps file from our epic data this is the zip file which i downloaded in the morning or what you can do is you can convert this into a google kml, KML file so once you get this kml file this can be opened in a google earth or you can, even you can open in a uh, what do you call even <clears throat> uh, google map itself in a, in a uh, um, uh, web page so that you can view your data sir that's how we can do the uh, uh, our data even if you don't have a, any ga software uh, at our end hope i think you got my point thank you sir yeah uh, now coming back coming back uh, one question is fielded and all of you have the whatsapp numbers in fact there are two numbers uh, if you call that number and within 15 seconds please tell your data uh, tell your query and switch off uh, i mean uh, cut the call you will come live so just to keep the ball rolling dr surendranath went uh, ran the extra mile to tell you about some desktop software. You people must be wondering. We are teachers of GIS from the Geological Survey of India. In fact, in our careers, this is the first time we are running a course uh, for totally dedicated to mobiles. We, four of us, decided that we will not take up anything other than mobiles because mobile is a thing with everyone and here we have geologists environmentalists archaeologists even tourist operators who want to make tours to their nearest geo heritage localities they're all there we have some people from ladakh they are uh, they operate wonderful tours uh, and geotourism is nothing but tourism. So now coming back, the GIS course, mainly the open source kind, Dr. Surendranath indicated a GIS name. It is known as QGIS. Some people prefer to call it QGIS. Both are correct. Quantum GIS. It is an open source GIS, so popular that Department of Science and Technology for all its research projects is only giving, asking people to do it on QGIS. They also conduct winter and summer schools using QGIS. So please, we will very soon, uh, very soon announce a course like this on totally on webinar training on how to use open source GIS. Open source actually means the source code of the software, mind you. Source code of the software. That means those who have coded the source, it will also be given to public on the website. So people can modify it for making a Tamil front end, a Bengali front end, a Devanagari front end. That is, in simple terms, a Hindi front end. And you can have a front end in Marathi, 
Yes. So this is the strength of open source software. And among the softwares on the smartphones, both OSM and, and Epicollect 5, they belong to the open source category. The mapillary belongs to a category. It is not open source, but because it is totally supported by these open source software OSM and, and it is integrated with it, we have taken that up. So I hope that there are some more questions. We invite you to use the WhatsApp number. Ask some questions. There is so much you can ask because we have only started you at touching the tip of the iceberg geographic information system which is available on this smartphone there is a wealth of information so dr farooq has rightly asked about how to simulate data now what is simulated data what is actual data so let us take this test case that Dr. Farooq has taken his photograph and probably it will move it nearest to where it belongs. There is, there are several national geological monuments in Odisha. I give you a corollary. I pose you a challenge here, all my dear trainees ages from 18 years to 73 years. Now, you know the oldest rock where it occurs in India. The oldest rock in India occurs in the state of Odisha. And it is at to be declared as a national geological monument. It is waiting. So we can say it is already a geo heritage and you simply Google even now all of you with smartphones Google Odisha oldest rock in India. You will come out with that. Uh, there is uh, a very young geologist who has joined Geological Survey of India after the PhD. After PhD, he has joined Geological Survey of India and the PhD belongs to this very oldest rock. So from the website, you can take the photograph, just right click and save it as a photograph on your mobile. Then what you do in the website, see what is the village, see what is the village. See the village that is there on the website. I am on the webinar now. Uh, see what is on the website. You will come up with a village name. Try to find out where the village is. And now put two and two together. You know what to do. In that epic act, give the simulated lat long of that village and attach it with the photograph you just saved. I want to see it happen very soon. Okay. I hope somebody else will come up with some ideas before I will be giving you my ideas. Now, let's see. Let us shift our platform to to our OSM and OSM and is so deep. I have been using it for years. Probably since the, that hood hood uh, cyclone, which myself and Dr. Farooq, uh, part of those who are benefiting from this webinar training, way back in 2000, 14 or 13, I'm not sure. We uh, went to actually map how the Vishakapatnam coastline is affected by Hudhud because Dr. Farooq himself is an expert 
in coastline changes. They also call it changes of strand, paleo strand lines. And uh, we collected quite a good amount of data. But map, uh, this OS Amanda has really evolved to be one of the finest softwares. So now, in OS Amand, you get that Odisha's oldest rock, simulate the location, bring it to OS Amand. Both Surendranath and Ramurthy have explained to you at detail, in detail, how it can be done. And then, Nearer to that, search for a mapillary track. It is likely you might be lucky to have one. If you don't have one, find out a friend who is nearby. Here, I am again going nearer and nearer to the working area of Dr. Farouk. <laughs> he visits often the places very close to this oldest rock. So maybe one of these days when he visits a mine, Dr. Farouk is a consulting geologist on many mines. So I request him, spare some time, go to this Odisha rock, put it exactly where it belongs on Epicollect, and then give us, present us with a mapillary track. So then we will put it, put the ball in the court of my parent organization, Geological Survey of India. We have a lot of academia and GSI retired people on our site. We will mount enough pressure that the oldest rock, second oldest rock in the world, deserves to be a geo-heritage site. Make it national geological monument as early as possible. So now I request my friends Surendranath, Ramamurthy, or Nageshwaran, chip in. I would sip my tea. I'm offline. One of you, please chip in. Sir, be, be line, be online. Uh, there are some uh, questions from the viewers. Uh, I will read out the questions. Megha Parul, she is asking, can I add an already taken data as photograph taken in the past to Epicollect? Is it possible? Surendranath, I think she is confusing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it is possible, sir. Uh, it is possible. One, one can uh, add the data, uh, existing data in your mobile. But the only thing is, uh, you have to add it with the local coordinates because while collecting the data in the Epicollect uh, 5 app uh, through mobile, you have no option to edit the um, GPS coordinates because it takes automatically from your uh, uh, system whatever is, uh, GPS coordinates available to your system once you enable the location uh, feature in the mobile. So you, you add that uh, same coordinates wherever you are there but you can add the photograph of some, some, some other area as well uh, which is of interest to you on which, which of the, co the coordinates of the site which you know where, from where the photograph has been collected. So you can just um, um, upload the data into in a existing uh, project there and if you are the creator of the project what you can do is uh, you can go to the uh, 5.5.5.net uh, and, uh, and go there and access your project there. Uh, you can view the data there and you can edit it if you have the if you are the owner of the project in case if somebody is the owner you cannot do anything there what you can do is uh, uh, you can request him to do the modifications or you can ask him the permissions to do the need uh, data editing part. But that can be done only in the uh, web page of the Epicollect 5. 
not in the mobile app okay uh, if, if you don't have permissions if you have permissions you need to log into the uh, even web phone also you can log into the web page of the uh, five.epicollect.net and you can access your file there and you can do editing even in the phone also provided you have the permissions or you are created of the uh, Yet I think two persons I was the same question. Pravin Sinha also had similar doubt. Uh, Pravin Sinha also, and uh, so that that that's the uh, action which we can take uh, in the epicollect file. There is one more uh, question. Uh, I have a question on epicollect file. Do epicollect yeah. work even where there is no mobile network, as some geological sites are at very remote areas? Yes, sir. You can you can do it because uh, once uh, Epicollect Five uh, app is uh, already downloaded in your phone, with your connection also you can open it up, and uh, uh, you can. Uh, <clears throat> but only thing is, you need to access the project. Uh, once you need to access the project, means you, you have to have some connectivity. What one can do is access the project uh, uh, b- before going away from the uh, connectivity site. Keep it. Uh, uh, Um, uh, app live though you don't have connection but still you can collect the data but it will be in the locally in your phone only you are saving it locally in your phone you can do all the uh, things locally in the phone once you have the um, uh, connectivity you can upload the data into the web server that's how you can do it but only thing is um, you have to access the project uh, from the app so for that you need connectivity if you don't if you don't have the connectivity you cannot access the project from the epicollect 5 uh, Uh, website. Yeah. Uh, now uh, I'll come in again. Uh, Dr. Surendra Nath has uh, very nicely answered it, and in fact, uh, he is doing a lot of work on that. Now I wish to show you uh, the actual thing how it can be done. Let us see it. I think all of you will appreciate it. I'm doing it on a laptop, but you can do it on a mobile. please see it so, this is the epicollect site i hope i am audible surendranath am i audible okay then so this is uh, how the epicollect site opens and then this is how the epicollect file site opens and this must be your own form that's what surendranath has said your own form means you see i have logged in l o g o u t that means i can log out so i have logged in so i will go to my projects see what happens and the project this project is the project in which you have collected your data so now i will go to view and i'll get the view view data it depends on how fast is your internet my internet is taking some time because somebody else is sharing it here at home so i'll again click view data so this is the table i get uh this is the table i get and this is the data all of you are have collected so then uh, let us change the data of one of them i will change the data of one of them you know this edit button this button this button only comes if you have logged in it will it will not be there if you have not logged in now i am going to say take one of them uh, and try to change it now first i will view the actual data itself this is the actual data which dr surendranath has added you have seen it this is the natural arch at uh, tirumala now let us go to the editing part of it see what happens i am editing it it will take some time even on your mobile this can work so this is the scout data now 
very carefully please watch me this can be done on your mobile and this is the answer to your queries dr farooq and others you see i brought my cursor onto that i am just moving it i have taken it to bay of bengal so just imagine ladies and gentlemen now i'm showing you that if you are the owner of the farm now the question is on a big like five you can always own a farm make a farm yourself it's not a big deal because this is an existing farm with more than 60 data collected so ap collect has put in force certain tabs so that nobody can change the data because location data changed is location data many times destroyed so you see this is as easy as that i can simply change it where i want to and uh, you do the same thing so if i click because it is my own friend surendranath data i can take a chance because anyway surendranath has not gone there to this particular very holy site i am going to just click update location you see location updated it has told me i would now say if it is an accurate data location updated is a hinting at me damn is done and damn is recorded so be very careful ladies and gentlemen that if you are trying to play with this so don't play with the data which is important for you you can also have a satellite imagery background you see nevertheless though it is on tirumala i am seeing the satellite imagery background so i can even now do it so i can take it to where i like and uh, i can probably i will reduce the thing yeah it is uh, near the nallamala hills i'll put it probably it is it is gone back to where it belongs let us enlarge it okay let us now enlarge it and see what's going on so yeah yeah near about uh, change the thing to open street map you can get Uh, places names and all that now reduce it a bit you know it is uh, adavaram and uh, all those places so probably i can take it to uh, nearly where it belongs you can pull it where it belongs probably i can make it t h i r u m l a address tirumala sir ravi sir ravi kumar ravi kumar sir yeah is it not that so, so, sorry to interrupt please uh, so, so ladies and gentlemen i i actually showed you how you can change data so i'm very happy on one thing that there are people with classes i'm sure that they are online classes so they don't have to actually step out of their house good enough so we covered today how to simulate data this is the biggest thing i expect you people these three days intervening with the other part of the next concluding version of the webinar and uh, you have our email addresses uh, especially mine i have shared with all of you please come up with how you want to plan with your field work i expect it by today evening such that uh, we can give you some suggestions so you will do your field work if you are lucky enough if you are in a far flung village being in a village is the luckiest thing nowadays so then probably you can just walk and do something wearing a mask that is the best thing so you please give me your feedback uh, in today's training of ours sir please. just to uh, uh, ragu master one question please and there are question by a student his question is uh, as a student what is our role in collecting the geo heritage uh, data uh very fast i would say that uh, 
you should not shirk from asking such questions. Probably had we been actually in a classroom, you would have shirked. But because we are on a digital platform, uh, it is nice you have asked such a question. Now, you know, Geo Heritage has got such a potential in our country that immediately it benefits, immediately it benefits the environmentalist, the geologist, and uh, the archaeologist. So this is a very, very important thing. And then suppose you are a student, maybe you are only a graduate student and it is likely you may not take geology as a subject. It doesn't matter. Geology is nothing but science of Mother Earth. Mother Earth will remain Mother Earth and all the scientific branches which are used for interpreting Earth is part of geology. So we have subjects like even geobotany, geoenvironment and so on. So when you actually give us some geoheritage site, then you will add to the uh, existing bank of geoheritage sites, which later on will be converted into geoparks. About that, I will email you what is geopark and all that, because now time is not sufficient. Then next thing is, Jew heritage, archaeological heritage, anthropological heritage, ecological heritage, they all go together. You know what are endangered species of fauna and flora? Fauna is for animals, flora is for plants. So you just Google, you will find a lot of flora and fauna where you live, which is endangered. So collecting data of where it is available, how it is taken care of, even that is in a strict sense, Jew heritage. So ladies and gentlemen, a lot of it can be discussed online. Please email me. And those of you who have seen two WhatsApp numbers, you can give us WhatsApp and we'll definitely answer all your queries. And uh, if there are no more questions, Today's, today's training webinar, yes, uh, we can conclude. Uh, my colleagues, Suryendranath, Nageshwaran and Ramamurti, do we have any more questions? How to delete a track after upload if the track is wrongly drawn due to bad GPS location? Uh, uh, actually, you cannot delete a track after uploading. Before uploading, you can do any editing or any any change in the sequence and all. But after uploading, uh, you cannot uh, delete it unless you delete your uh, account and request them to delete the data also, which they may not do. So deleting uh, data after uploading is not possible. Uh, is it, does it answer your query, uh, An Anuj Kumar? from Himachal. Anuj Dhanetia. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Probably it is answered and he will email us. Yeah. Uh, go, oh, any more questions? Just one second. No, it's, there are so many <laughs> messages now. Uh, no problem. Just read them. No, nothing. No problem. Because we are recording. And those yeah. who have questioned, even if they are not present now, they will receive the answers. Yeah. yeah. That question uh, about uh, the involvement of students in the collection of uh, Geo Heritage data is from uh, Sonia Tiagi from uh, Derado. She asked that question. Uh, good. Uh, then we have uh, answered it. So go to the yes, next sir. question. Yeah, well, you see, we keep a record of all your questions. You just chat and our people, four of us, some of us are there on the chat and uh, we note them and we'll definitely answer them. My friend Nagesh Ramamurthy 
and uh, Surendranath. They are going through them. If there are repeated questions, then yeah, they may ignore them because one of them is already answered. So this is how it goes. And uh, we are still open for questions and comments. Can I have a question? Hello, nice sir. Ah. Yeah, you are you are yeah, audible. Papillary uh, asking uh, asking us how to change the uh, angle of the camera. Oh, you you need not change it. Once you are you are holding that camera towards the object we are clicking, you need not uh, change the angle. That is uh, taken from the camera itself. So there is no need of uh, change of uh, angle there. I think uh, may I add. I think the camera should be always horizontal. Yes, uh, that's a dimension. Parallel to yeah, the longest dimension should be parallel to your floor. Yeah. If you keep it vertical, uh, you, there is a mistake. Please remember that. Uh, there is one uh, question. Uh, I need to delete only one sequence of uploading. Means what I should want to do. Uh, you can delete before uploading. Uploading you can do anything, but after uploading you cannot do the same uh, reply. And uh, why we are using distance-based mode rather than time thresholds? Uh, because uh, when you are moving, you are not uh, moving at a constant speed. You may be going faster or you may be going slower. If you are going slower, if you put that uh, time threshold, there is a possibility that that uh, photographs will be clicked at the same place again and again. So uh, it is better to have a distance uh, threshold so that after that particular distance you are covering only then the click uh, that uh, photographs will be taken. So we always uh, go for a distance uh, based uh, uh, capturing. Okay. Then, uh, there is one more question, sir. Uh, do we need to have prior knowledge of the geo heritage site nearby to our location, or we can map any outcrop we feel is geologically worthy? He is gone. Ravi Kumar Sab is gone. Hello? Yeah, he is not there. Can you reply? Which one, sir? Can you repeat, sir? Uh, do we need to have a prior knowledge of the geo heritage site nearby to our. Sir, there is one question. Go ahead. Uh, do we need to have a prior knowledge of the geo heritage site nearby to our location or we can map any outcrop we feel is. Geologically worthy. Yeah, this is a good question. Uh, for example, take the case of National Geological Monuments. In India, any site which is declared as National Geological Monument is recognized by the government and negotiated between the central and the state government, central government, Geological Survey of India. And then you erect a signage, a board, writing like uh, the Thiruvikkarai, Fazilwood Park, Tamil Nadu, and so on and so forth. So this is the present system that is in place. But why people know that there is much more to geo-heritage? As a geologist, uh, I think that uh, words are insufficient to explain our state of mind, to tell that there is so much and uh, so little done about it. But my own parent department, Geological Survey of India, should not be held responsible. Our mandate as Geological Survey of India is entirely different. Our mandate is to map. So we have to bring the geo heritage sites both geological ecological archaeological anthropological to the fore 
and uh, in this anything you look with your eyes may be your heritage and somebody else may say oh what is there there is nothing great about that so it is your responsibility to collect all the information of that site because one day doing field work making photographs of the rock lo locating on the epic collect will not do it is only the seed the seed of your query you come back then you refer to it there is something different for example <coughs> let us go to the granulite domain of south india charnokites are available with various other rocks you have charnokites occurring with condolites you have charnokites that are miles and miles away from condolites so but they are both called as charnokites maybe with further mapping and with the evolution of idea of granulites maybe some charnokites will be renamed as something else because the science always evolves and it is for us for the university of bangalore or for the university of mysore to find out that no this there are charnokites and charnokites you cannot equate the charnokites around hole narsipur or chitradurga chitradurga is far away from charnokites anyway so you should always think of innovation and your collection of the data taking a photograph the out of the outcrop is only a seed and you will go back go to your library talk to your professor do much more work the younger you are the better i hope i have answered nagesh sir sir uh, one more question from uh, arjun anuj kumar he says some of the projects are locked in epicolet 5 yeah this is uh, what we have been trying to explain to you because uh, you people have definitely used epicolet 5 you should it is just like think of your email email account you know that others cannot open it unless you divulge the password why you think that you should not divulge your password to someone else because you have data which you really care about so is the case with epicollect 5 you see for example just for the sake of geoerity scout i made a form because this form is just a few days old and it is meant for training i can actually make you what is known as a manager of the form this is how someone can give you access to making certain changes let us see that we are a big group now uh, i think at least more than 20 people are following this webinar and including us we are about half uh, a quarter century so together we will embark on some data collection spree and then i can make people who want to do some good work i can give them manager status so please explore epicollect 5 a bit and surendranath our expert is there you just email to me i'll send it or otherwise his email can be shared with you no issue if you see the emails you have been receiving surendranath nagesh and uh, uh, my friend ramamurthy their emails are also there so you just email us we are ready to give you some in depth knowledge of epicollect 5 but i would request you please make your own form explore epicollect 5 and then you will understand all this it is easy you can ask someone to become a manager of that particular epicollect form but it depends on the owner of the form if some of you want to be the manager of the form of geoerity scout yes i can allow you what i do is the existing data i will save somewhere else and i will give you access 
So every time I will monitor if anything is going wrong so that I can again uh, shorten the access and make it all right. So this way, you know, this is how a communal, a community functions. I hope I have answered your question. Next question, please. Uh, on uh, Sopnil Deshmukh uh, is asking, in case we fail to complete a track of a single geological site in a flow, can we join the two or more tracks for a complete view of the geological site? Uh, if you cannot come, you, if you could not cover the uh, site in one uh, stretch, you can always do it in two stretches because when uh, in uh, mapillary or in uh, OSM, you are going to see it as a seamless uh, data. So it will be continuous data because uh, the points will be there. Uh, so you can collect uh, in uh, different stretches also, but there should not be any gap. There should be sufficient overlap. So with, uh, if, if you can take care of the overlap, you can uh, do that uh, in uh, different stretches also. Swapnil Deshmukh. And uh, any other, sir? Anybody want to add to that? Yeah, you have you have answered it perfectly. You are the expert on uh, this mapillary. Uh, only thing is, they might be wondering if they want to actually click on the play button, then uh, it will play as two stretches. That you have to, you can't help it, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yes, sir, yes, sir. So uh, let's the, go. To the... That is all, sir. There is no other uh, question as. You can see now. It's so nice. All of us, let us come live because this is a live recording. Uh, we will say bye to all the trainees. Please come live, Nagesh. Yeah, yeah, nice. And uh, Ramamurti Garu. Yeah, good. Uh, we uh, thank you for this uh, very patient webinar. We are going to share this video with you after a bit of uh, editing. And our editing expert is the one who is conducting it. Nageshwaran is a fantastic editor of uh, these things. Okay, uh, we will see you on emails. We will see you on emails. And remember, to qualify for the certificates, the interaction shows the interest you have. Please show your interest. And the one who is going to certify is not me. A professor from Delhi University. So we will put your case before him and he should feel that there is a worth in all the work done and he will give you your certificate. Bye-bye uh, for now. Namaskar. Sir, there was, yeah. there, there, was one, there was one question by Arvind. He says some of the participants have left uh, uh, they have not put their presence or uh, they have not asked any questions. So whether they will be also be considered as uh, being present or not, they wanted to know. But uh, when uh, I told them at least they should have put their names in that uh, chat box. So next time we will announce uh, that they, everybody, whoever is attending, they should put their uh, names there. Very, very right. Uh, Arvind is also, he is our policeman among yeah. the trainees. Yeah. It's good. He's, he's monitoring that uh, from the trainee's side. That's a good thing. Hey, hey, Arvind, I know you are hearing. Now, we didn't get many calls except uh, Dr. Farooq. But Please sir, they have, they have given uh, voice messages. I have got voice messages. Two, three people voice wonderful, messages. Wonderful. That's exactly yeah. I wanted to tell you, Arvind. Please share with all your friends to go to voice messages. They are the best that can happen because if their phone rings, you know, while we are live, uh, it might give some problem. So with this, uh, should we conclude, Surendra Garu? Yes, sir. Uh, and uh, Nagesh, Surendra Garu and Ramamurti. I yes, hope we all agree. We will edit and uh, we will share this video with you. Okay, bye-bye. Namaskar, Vanakkam and uh, Khoda office. Bye. bye. It, was, it was a nice session. Bye, sir. Uh, bye. Okay, bye.